Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and today I'm here with something slightly different. So as you can see by my ultra messy mat, we're about to get messy. Now, um, I don't class myself a mixed media artist, although I love doing mixed media, and I think more of us are doing mixed media than you actually think, because basically it's different mediums on the same substrate or what, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, I do it. Um, I usually don't share it, and I usually don't do tutorials or sharing my process. However, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, I shared this tag because I was just in the mood and I had some fun and created this. And so many of you asked me, Kerry, can you please show us how to do something like this? This is an MDF tag. Can you do one of these for us? And I've hummed and hard and I've debated and gone, shall I, shan't I? But you know, this is the year I need to be brave. So we're going to do a tag today. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I have no idea. Normally I take quite a while to do them and it's a process and it evolves and I'll leave it over several days and go back to it. But I'm going to try and do it all in one go. I'll have to take breaks to dry things in between and we'll just see where this goes. So let's take that one out of the way and show you what we're going to work with. So first and foremost, I can't remember whether I got this in Hobby Lobby sorry Hobbycraft, the works, whether I got it online, I don't know, but I've, I've got some of these. I know that you can get them in MDF as well. I know you can get them in chipboard. So this is what I took and I immediately covered it in white gesso. Okay, just that's my process for almost everything that is made of wood or even made of card is I cover it in white gesso first. That way it stops too much of the paints or the glues or the inks absorbing onto it. So that's our basis. And actually let's bring in this one again. Let's see if I can get this little tag off the top just so it doesn't get on my nerves flapping around. Um, and I, because I trick I tend to use that I have two of the same item I'm working on and then if I want to lay anything out before I stick it on to the, to the real one, I'll lay it out on there and stick it on there. So, as I said, we've got white on the first one. Let's just move that to one side so we know it's there. First and foremost, I'm going to talk about I need to build layers. And it's layers all the way from the back, all the way to the front. And I don't worry if some of the layers I've put down actually never get seen because they get covered up but it's a bit of an ongoing process. So I like to start with some rubber stamping. So I'm gonna pull in, a, this is a Tim Holtz, is it Ardeology? I always get confused with his brand. Uh, it's Ledger Script number CMS241. It's a two part stamp um, because I store my things in this envelopes. I couldn't get the two part stamp in there. So I cut it, I cut the plastic down and half is another one. I'm not going to actually put it onto a rubber stamp because it's already on the mat anyway. I'm using black archival, which I've already got on there as you can just see. It doesn't bother me. There are so many layers of stuff going on here that I don't even know what's going to be visible. Now I don't want to stamp the whole thing, but I do want bits here and there. Just to put a little interest into the background. And then a little bit more down there. And we may come back later on and actually add more stamping once I see where the process for this has gone. A little bit more up there. There you go. So that's my very first layer. That's, that's what we need to regard them as. It's layers. We're building a cake. We're doing layers upon layers upon layers of frosting. And hopefully the cake will be delicious in the end. And that's the bakery and confection that's all can in me, guys. So... Next, I need to think, right, I would actually like to put on here um, not just visual texture, but texture texture. So I'm going to use a stencil now. This is a brand new stencil I bought a while back and haven't had a chance to use it. Again, it's a Tim Holtz one. Uh, it's a layering stencil. Does it have a name? I can never find the names on these things. I've got a feeling it's something like scroll. Oh, THS149 script layering stencil, but I thought it had another name. I thought it was something like Gothic or something along those lines. 
So I'm just going to pull this out now. Luckily it fits on the whole tag, but I'm actually not going to do the whole tag. I'm just going to do areas. I tend to like to do things in balances. So I'll probably do some there, probably do some there, probably do some there. And then that way it balances for me. And what I'm using, I'm using some modeling paste and I'm just going to put it onto a bit of a metal palette so I can clean the palette up as I go along. Um, this stuff is pretty thick. There are definitely other texture mediums out there that you could be using. I would say use what you're used to using and what you know. Don't go in straight away and try this with something you've never used before. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit on my palette knife. I'm just going to come in. Now you could be using a store card. You could be using an old credit card. You don't have to be using a palette knife. I just use a palette knife because I'm used to using a palette knife. So as you can see, I'm just putting a bit of texture on here. Maybe a little bit more down the side of there. Just pop that in there. Lift that up. And I really quite like this big number. So I want to put that down here. As I said, it may not be seen in the final build. It may not even be noticeable because there'll be so many other things on the top of it. But I know it's there. Right, let's just lift that off. I'm not looking for an absolutely perfect impression of anything whatsoever. Let's just scrape a bit of There's a little bit there I don't want stuck on. Now, the other thing I've noted is I have stuff on the sides. So if I just run my palette knife up the sides, I'll get rid of any bits that are sticking over the sides. So that's my first layer. Now, a couple of things to do immediately. I've got a damp cloth and I'm just going to wrap my stencil in that damp cloth just so that it doesn't dry out when I'm working. And then at one point when I actually stop to dry stuff off, I will then put that back in. Now, if there's something I want to do is not waste this, so that can come off and go back in there. I sometimes wonder where, why the squeezy aperture is in the top of these, because half the time I just take the lid off and use it straight out the pot. But I suppose someone somewhere that wanted one of the squeezy tops I just find it easier just to dip in. So where else am I? A little bit of a wipe down here. I should really wet this cloth as well. So um, I find when I'm working these little spritz bottles are incredibly handy. Um, sometimes because I'm a bit of a klutz and I can knock stuff over. So if I've got a cup or a jug of water on the go, you never know, I might knock it over. So I tend to use spritz bottles a lot of the time. So right. Let's put that over to one side. So here we go. So we've got the foundation of the tag. And it is, just remember, it is the foundation. It's not the final tag. Now, what I'm going to use now is if um, I use quite a bit of MDF. So this is a little sledge MDF that I've been doing for a TV show lately. That it was a Christmas launch and it was part of a bigger kit. But once I built it, I had all of these lovely little pieces hanging around. So what I ended up, and there were two, two sleighs, there was a sledge and a sleigh. So I ended up with all of this residue stuff that I tend to hang on to. I mean, I've got a box just purely for bits because to everyone else, this may seem like waste. But to me, these are really interesting pieces. I mean, I can snap these, I can cut them, I can stick them onto something. So I tend to hang on to these. So I'm going to just play around a bit with those. I just need to turn my hot glue gun on. Sorry about that. I don't tend to leave my hot glue gun on all the time because it gets really fierce and it burns the heck out of me. So, right, I'm going to play with a few of these pieces and see what I want to put on here. Anything that I don't want, I can just snip with a little pair of scissors. It's going to snip off quite nicely. Um, and I don't have a plan. I'm just purely, purely winging this at the moment. Um, but I do see th certain shapes in here that I like. So, as I said, it's all about playing around with what you've got in front of you. Now, this will eventually get stuck on there, but I was just wanting to get little things in here to build up some layers. I quite like that bit, actually, but that's too wide for that. Do I want that on there at all? Maybe I want that instead. So, it's just, it's one of these... It's like buying a new coat. You've got to try pieces before you actually find the ones you really want. 
I don't mind that bit in there. That's kind of looking interesting. Right, a couple of little pieces would be a benefit. I'll stick one of those up there. I seem to be going for quite a long linear shape. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. I'm wondering. Let's see, it's just so wide. So let's put these by one side because I know I can't use them, they're too big. Um, there's another one of them. Is there something on here? This may be interesting. This piece here. So just going to come in with my little scissors and snip these ends just so they're not looking that raggedy. I think I might like that out of there. That actually looked like it was meant to be in there, doesn't it? So, actually, I'm wondering about this piece now because I just remembered I have one of these plaster pieces. I think I bought it at a craft show. It may have been a miniature show, and I wanted to put that up there. So that needs to be my... Should I pull it down so I've got the hole showing? Yes, because I might want to hang this. So uh, there you go, so that's up there. Was there anything else? I've got some corrugated card that I'm going to slot under at some point, but I want to make sure I've got this on here first. I really did like this, but now looking at all this, it feels like it's too much. I can't explain what my mind is thinking, guys, because I really don't know. My brain is just going for it. Now, I do know there are a couple of other elements I want in here. I've got a plaster frame that at some point is going to be stuck on here. Um, don't know where. It's just going to be stuck on here somewhere. Um, but I don't know. I'm thinking of changing that one already into that one. So just a process of elimination. I do quite like that down there. I've also got a skull and don't ask me where it came from I don't know it was just in my kit box let's just put it that way the things that end up in my kit box I don't always know where they come from because I don't always keep um I don't always keep the packaging but I'm playing with those ideas because I think there might be something there that I might want to put in there but I'm unsure so right I'm going to put this lot to one side and start sticking stuff down now, I'm going to use hot glue for this. Um, a lot of the time I'll use a medium that takes a little bit longer to um, firm up. Um, like a, a wet glue or a gel glue. But because I'm doing this on a video, I thought, right, let's try and do this as quick as I can. So I don't take up too much time. Right, now I am actually looking through an iPad to do this. So I'm going to lift this up occasionally just so I can see that I've got things centralised and where I want them. And I think that's pretty much where I want that one. Right, now there's going to be a layer of gesso over the top of this as well. Why can't my glue go stretch? Oh, I've got it trapped under the filing cabinet. Right, so, um, so there's going to be a layer of gesso and that will hold a lot of this in place if it isn't glued down. So I'm not overly worried. Let's just put that in, get off my finger. Is that straight-ish? If it isn't, it's stuck down now, people. That's that one. Right, I quite liked this piece over to one side. So I've got to keep my glue gun off screen purely because the cable's not long enough for me to reach all the way on screen. So that can go about there. Right, before I put this piece in, I wanted to consider what I wanted to do with the corrugated cardboard. And I really liked this. This was just a bit of packaging I found, and I did quite like this. And I thought, you know what, once this is painted up, it will give me something different on here. Sure, I don't mind that. Take that down there. Now, again, I'm just going to stick this on with a bit of gl hot glue, purely because it's going to be painted over the top, it's going to be held down. So if I do this, I'm burning myself to death. Try to get them as straight as possible. And um, where's that last piece? And I think if I pop, I'm debating this bit now. I liked it before, I don't know whether I do now. 
Actually, I think I do still like it. I think the thing is that when you're doing mixed media, you have to not judge whether you like your piece until you've ended your piece, which is very hard to do sometimes because I'm quite... I'm quite I'm one of those people who I could stop quite easily in the middle of a project and go, no, it's awful, I don't like it. And I have to learn that actually it's okay to let something evolve. So it's a bit of a problem of mine, but you know what? I know it and I find out ways of dealing with it. So let's pop that up there. Let's get rid of those loose strings because I don't need those in the final project. So as you can see, I'm just literally layering stuff up. Now I'm thinking I might want to take just a little bit more and go across there. I'm going to hop it on the back of there. Right, so I've got the foundation of something in my mind. I can already see that this might look really pretty or really interesting on there. There's going to be something in the picture frame. I do know I'm probably going to put the skull down there somewhere. I don't know 100% yet, but I think the next thing is I just need to come in and get a bit of white gesso on this. Let's take this back out of the way. Bear with me, I need to turn my glue gun off because it gets extremely hot and goodness knows what it's going to do if it gets too hot. Right, hot glue gun, done. So I'm going to move this away now because I don't actually need this anymore for laying things out. But it's something I want to share with you that actually it's quite nice to have something like that occasionally on the side. Because then you know how much space you're going to work on. I just realised I need to dry this first because this paste here is still wet. So I'm going to take a minute to do this. Um, I'm going to use just a regular hairdryer. So I'm going to turn you off a second so you don't get blasted by the noise and then I'll be straight back. See you in a second. So here I am back again. We've given that a bit of a blast. I've actually washed off my stencil at the same time. So we're at the stage now where I want to give this a coating. Of there you go, white gesso. <laughs> I knew I had it. You can see where my brain is today, can't you? Right, oh, it's a relatively new pot as well. So you're looking for white gesso, people. You're trying to make this whole thing the same color. Um, it could take a couple of layers of gesso. Um, depending on how thick your gesso is, um, some brands are more heavy gesso, some brands are lighter, and it's purely a case of I want the whole thing to be white. Now, do I care if I cover any of the script? No. Do I care if I paint the whole tag? No. I'm literally just getting stuff on, on the structure I've just built. So I'm going to try and keep this in camera as I do this. There will probably be a little bit of drying time in the middle of all of this as well. Something else I'm going to do is this plaster piece here, or plaster piece, I'm going to paint that as well because it's made of plaster, it can be really porous. And if there's one really good, nice thing about gesso, it tends to seal stuff off so that you can actually um, put more liquid products on top without them absorbing in too quickly. If I'm making like a fairy house or I'm making something that's made of cardboard, I tend to paint everything with white gesso once I've constructed it before I start painting because then that cuts down on the chance of whatever I'm painting, if I get it wet, is it going to absorb too quickly? Is it going to warp? Because sometimes when you add water, especially to grey board or cardboard, sometimes it warps and goes out of shape and especially if you're doing a building which i sometimes do buildings um it can distort the whole building unless you're doing something like a witch's house or a fantasy build and then it doesn't matter because sometimes the bendy stuff is the quirky stuff everyone likes so it's coming from the side now i'm not sure whether everyone's going to see this from the side but you never know do you so just do that get that in there and all the little nooks and crannies. Now the gesso is painting this white, but it's also doing another job as well. It's filling in any little cracks and crevices and almost acting like another glue. So. Kind of getting there.
Now, because I know you don't need to see me do this over and over again, because I watch enough videos to know that sometimes watching someone paint is exactly as boring as watching paint dry, because you are watching paint dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn you off for a few seconds, give this another little blast with um, the hairdryer, just to make sure it's fully dried, and then I'm gonna give it another coat just to make sure it's white white. Okay, so I'll see you in a second. So here I am back again. I've actually dried it off, gave it another coat and dried it off again, just trying to build up so it's an even whiteness. I've also painted, I thought that was plaster, but it's actually resin, so I've painted that. And I thought this element down here needed something, and I found this other little element as well. I painted that up. So I think we're going to add these now to this. I've yet to decide exactly where things are going to go. We're going to play around with this one. I do know I think I want it slotted in there somewhere, possibly by there. I don't know, it's one of those elements I saw and went, oh, I really want something to bring this down. Or am I changing my mind again now? It's okay to change your mind. I just wish that wasn't as long, because that seems to be a bit off frame for me. I did quite like that under there. Why can't I put it under there? Maybe that was the right place to put it, because I'm not sure yet how everything is fitting in. So, no, my gut feeling is saying no. My gut feeling was saying yes, but now it's saying no. So we're going to leave that out. And that's part of the process, guys. You don't always know exactly what you want where until it's there. So if that will make sense to anyone. Right, so I need to work out the positioning of this. And I need to know where the positioning of the skull is going to. And I think the skull always was meant to be there. But how high up this is meant to be, I don't know. I think that's possibly about right there. Now, what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to put some flowers in there. So I do, however, have a butterfly, a box of butterflies on hand that I quite like the idea of maybe adding a butterfly in there, but I needed to see the overall thing. And I've also got a whole box of flowers here that I was gonna use it as well or also. So I'm just gonna go with it. So right, I do think that needs to go there. That, that feels about right and that's definitely going there. So I think we can have a good dob of hot glue on the back of the skull to hold it in place. That can just sit straight in there. And then this hopefully will attach to enough things that will stay on there because it's quite a heavy piece. Let's take the glue string out of the middle. So I'm thinking I like it about there. That's really important to get that straight. That's as straight as my eye is going to make it. Right, to get rid of the glue string, so I just need to turn this glue gun off. I'm notorious for setting, well, not setting myself on fire, but burning myself with a glue gun. I do it several, several times. Um, then I'm just going to come in and give this one last coat just to make sure everything is quite white. It's all the same color before I start adding any different color to this. Now, there's another thing to consider as well is all of the brush marks I'm on here are actually added texture. I could come in with a texture paste and do a little bit of texturing on here as well, should I wish. Um, I'm not going to because I don't feel it needs it. I think there's enough going on with all of the background stuff, all of the foreground stuff, the whole lot. Um, I do want to paint the skull though just to get the, get the creaminess away from the skull. Um, I want the skull to be a little bit white, whiter. Um, I would say this clay, this feels like it was made from air drying clay. It's a very light, light clay piece. So, as I said, not sure where it came from. It was just, it was in my big old box of stuff to use on mixed media. So it could be that I made it a long time ago and it's hanging around. Could be it's someone else's. Um, but I have a big box of things that sometimes I, I think Tim Holtz and certain people call them findings. Um, I just, things I come across really. Why is there a string on there? We don't want strings. So as you can see, I'm not taking 
too much care with it all but I am actually wanting to make sure that it's all the same white so the thing is as we all know white isn't white uniformly it can be different color white depending on which brand you're using now I think now that I've got this on here I think I want to go in and establish a little bit more of the black um, stamping just here and there and then once I've done that I think I'll give everything one last dry with the hairdryer just that when we go to colour I'm not actually struggling with everything being wet at the same time so but I do think we've got as far as we can go with the whiteness so as you can see it's all about layers it's all about visual texture it's all about how far you actually want to take something and you can use anything you saw me use some spare MDF you could use off cuts of card you could use um, you know when you do die cuts the pieces that come off die cuts those could be there I'm now looking at this thinking does that need to go in there no, it's overkill, Griffiths. Step away from it. Step away. Sometimes I wish I did know when to stop. Um, right, I'm going to hit this with the hairdryer and then we're going to come back and we're going to go do some, some stuff then to make this look a little more pretty, a little more life lifelike and a le lot less just black and white. Bear with me. Right, all nice and dry, or so I believe. Um, I'm going to come in with a little bit more of this text. Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky because obviously I've got to get in and out of little areas. So what I might do is I might actually take this off its backing just so I can get little bits like that and tuck them in. So again, I'm using archival. Now this time, of course, the black will be black and it will stay black because we're not painting over the top. But as you can see, it just brings a little more layering to this because... Whereas before everything was black and then it got dulled down because we turned it grey because we painted over the top of it. Now I'm able to pop little bits in here and there. So I'm going to stick a little bit up there. And I'm going to put a bit across the top because that's looking a bit boring. There you go. I think we're pretty much done. It's just little elements because now we're going to go in and do some some paints and what paints am I using? I'm going to be using acrylics for this. Uh, you can use inks. I've seen some beautiful stuff done with inks. Um, you could use watercolors as well, although I'm not sure how um, how they handle long term. But I know that acrylics is what I normally use, and I like acrylics. So there you go. Right, let's pop that to one side. A little bit of a clean up there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the acrylics. But I'm going to use the acrylics neat and watered down. But then I'm going to water them down when they're actually in place. So I'm going to need a couple of brushes. I think that will do for one of them. That'll do for another one. Um, I want brushes where I can get into little nooks and crannies is what I'm kind of looking for. Okay, so the first colour I want to do... Actually, let's do a touch of brown. So I've got this mixture of brown acrylics here or I would if I could open the pot well that's not opening so right we're going to go in for in from the top you don't need a lot you just need a little bit there you go I'm going to come in with the brush and I'm going to try to remember where shadow would be so I'm going to come in and I'm going to put stuff in where I can come in afterwards and pull it down with some water. So, and I think it needs a little bit up here as well. And a little bit there. Right, now I've got, I've got a glass of water off to one side. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to get that wet. And I'm going to move it around a bit. Now, I would always say if you're going to do mixed media, make sure you do it in a place where you've got plenty of space to get messy because this will get messy and you don't want it all over a good tablecloth or something if you're working on a kitchen table. That would just be wrong. And your significant other may be very, very upset at that. So, 
Right, now that I've got that on there, I'm going to come in with my spritz bottle and I'm going to really get it quite wet. The aim is to get it moving, to get the colour moving. Now, I could blot some of this off as I go along. Why are you running out of water? You can't be running out of water. So I'm just going to let that all move around a bit. Get a bit of kitchen paper on hand or kitchen towel so that if it runs off the bottom of the tag, I don't mind. So there you go. So we've got our first layer of colour on there. Let's just get that brush dried off a bit. So I could dry in between layers, but as I'm going to a different shade of brown in a second, I'm not going to. But when I go to, I've got a lighter colour I'm going to use as well. When I use that, I'm going to go in there and dry this in between. So I'm going to use a little bit of a, what colour would this be called? This is called Desert Sand, but to me it's a sort of torpish colour, sort of a beigey colour. I'm going to come in here, even though I don't intend for this to be seen. I think if it's white, it would look wrong. So let's pull that in, get down in there. I'm going to pull in some of this brown there. Again, just add it in patches. Um, the thing with mixed media is it's great fun, but it's only great fun if you just go with it. You just have fun with mixed media. It's not one of those things that you have to be 100% precise with. If anything, if it's too regimented, it doesn't look right. All right, put some up there. And I think I want to bring up that all the way up to up here. And then as I did before, I'm going to come in with some water, get that up there, get it a little more wet so that it's going to move around on me. And give myself, I'm going to lift this up because I think my bottle doesn't like be on an angle. Right, and again I'm going to lift this up and let it drain. And by draining, I'm not sure you can see it, I'm just letting everything run down the tag. This bit here looks a bit heavy to me. You run out of water. I don't think you have. Oh, I've got another one. I'm prepared for you. There you go. Get it all moving. You don't want it too heavy. And this is another reason why I put um, gesso on there to seal it so that if this was cardboard, it would soak straight through at this moment in time. Right. Let that run down. Try to turn it on side sometimes because you'll find there may be little pockets of water hanging around. And I don't like that bit on there, so there you go, get rid of that under there. Then what I'm going to do now before I go to the next colour is I'm going to give this a quick blast with a hairdryer. Okay, so. and welcome back if you did stop. Now I'm just going to dab this bit off here because I'm seeing there's quite a build up of water on the bottom of here. And I'd like to take a little bit of that away. And occasionally I'll just pull a bit out, as you can see, just take off. It just adds to the vintagey feel of it, so don't worry about that. So there you go, so we've now got those colours on there. Now I want to go with a colour that's really hopefully going to make this pop. Um, and I don't like the word pop, and I don't know why I just said the word pop, but you know what I mean. It's just one of those words that just comes into your mind. Well, some would say pops into your mind. I want to use this colour. Um, this is Bahama Blue. Um, by Art Deco. Right, so I'm going to pull a little bit of this in. Now it's, oh, a bit of paint stuck around the top. It's quite a powerful pungent colour, so I have to be careful I don't overdo it with this, but there are places I really want to bring this colour in. And I'm going to sort of work like that down my piece of art, because I want, I want the eye to travel with, with the colour. And I'm going to put quite a bit here on this edge because I know it's going to run down when I actually hit it with some water. Now I know this seems a bit planned as to where I'm putting it, but actually to me I can't work unless I'm working in balance. It's just 
I am OCD and sometimes that really dictates my artwork or a lot of my artwork should we say I think I like that right so again I'm just going to put some water into it just to keep it from drying out before I come in with the spray gun spray gun Atmos at Atmos I can't say atomizer that's the word I'm looking for yeah. trouble speaking today people trouble speaking so right so then I'm going to come in again I'm going to put my bit of kitchen towel kitchen paper down so that when it runs I can actually control it a little more just blasting that in there just keep things absolutely moving and obviously because it's diluting it down it's going to be lighter in color anyway just tipping that up I'm not sure how much you can see on screen so as you can see we've just got that hint of color in the background there now I'm liking that but I do know that I want it to be a little more punchy so I can go in and add more of that color again if I wish and then repeat the process I mean mixed media for me is purely just trying to just play and I say trying because um, I can be a bit controlling and and trying to let go has been one of my problems and my followers know that it's it's a case of I can't always control everything but exciting things happen when you let go of things and I think letting go of control has been one of the big things for me as far as experimentation with art and I think that's why I like mixed media because it'll it won't obey the rules it will just do whatever it wants so I just want to tip that up it'll do whatever it wants because there are no rules I just want to come in with a little bit and take I've got some some of the blue color on the black of the back of the skull and I don't particularly want it there There you go, Let that run down. So, right, I think we're getting there. I'm thinking it still needs something else. There's a color missing and I'm not 100% certain what it is, but I've got a feeling I know what it is. And I want to use something, I know it's a bit drastic, I want to use something along the lines of a pink. Um, that's possibly more the sort of colour I was thinking. Sorry, over in this corner I've got a whole pile of paints which I use. Um, all different sorts of acrylics. And it's just finding the one that I think is right for this project. What's this one called? Peony Plum. I think it's this one, don't you? Right. Let's go in. I just want to get in there and... There's beginning to be a well of water in there. I'll clear that well of water out. Right, let's just give this a little bit of a wipe because I've now got every colour in the sun on here. Well, every colour we've used so far anyway. That's enough to take that off. So this is Petal Pink by Deco Art. Again, it's not brand specific, guys. It's whatever you've got to hand that you want to use. I think that'll add a little something. I mean, I've got other stuff to do on here as well, so it's not the only colour by all means that's going to go on here. So, up in there. And a little bit up at the top just to carry the theme through and again and let it run now I think at this point I am going to have to hair dryer it again because it's getting to the point where it's going to get really wet now I don't mind at this point coming in and taking stuff away it's easily done when it's wet. It's not so easily done when it's dry. 
so you can see I'm just pulling some of this out of it okay I think we're gonna let that dry for a second and we'll consider what we need to do next now the whole point of this was something that was like light but not completely light if that all makes sense so I did pull in a couple of distress inks stains as well um, this is antique linen which is quite a nice it's almost like antique photo if you know that brand um, but what I want to do is if I'm going to use ink I want to make sure I shield things that I don't want to be colored that color so I'm going to come in and I'm just going to take a square of this to sit over there and a bit to sit over the top of the skull just to mask them off because I don't this goes everywhere I don't want it contaminating something that's white uh, and while we're at it I wonder whether I've got some other inks up here sienna was a color I quite like the look of I thought I had magenta somewhere Got orange orange may work on there this is just a color X it's it's just called orange I believe so let's put a little bit of this on here as well and this should really really knock everything into the foreground because it's such a strong color and this was meant to be my Halloween spread so I'm quite happy using orange And a little bit more up the top there, I think. Let's take this out of the way. And I'm going to do something you're not expecting. I'm going to take white. And again, this is a distress spray. Put a layer of that on. And then a layer of this again on the top. Now at this point, you're going to go, what the heck is happening here? What I'm doing is just building up those layers of colour yet again and letting them run. And where's my water? This time the water is going to really bring stuff down. So unfortunately I've only got one camera so I can't do a side view. But if I keep tipping this up and down you'll see what's happening. Mixed media is always an unknown beast. When you do it, you never know what you're going to get. And that's what I love about this. So I'm going to dab this out because that's become too much down there for me. And I don't mind that. Right. I seem to feel like I want something to make this really, really pop. But I can't actually work out what it is off the top of my head. I really am craving a dark pink colour. I don't think I've got one handy. Let's pull stuff around. I thought I had magenta somewhere. If not, I'll go in with a magenta. Is that magenta? It might be a magenta. Right, let's put all of those back down there. Let's see what this colour is. I've got a feeling this might be the magenta. If not, it's quite a dark colour. Is there any in there is a question. Right, let's just try and Get some of this on the go. We're on the tail end of this colour, whatever it is. Right. Now, I think if we let that one run, give it a life of its own. That's much more what I was thinking of. See what I mean? Right, and I think because I like that as it is, if I lay it flat, it will refuse to move. Any, well, it won't refuse to move. It won't move anymore. So I'm now going to come in and I'm going to use the hairdryer again. 
So okay, that's not completely dry, but it's dry enough for me to do the next stage. And this is really going in the direction I wanted now. I wanted this to be really dark and mysterious. So we're going to start considering other elements now. Now, I am going to put some gilding wax on this just to make it a bit more richer and opulent. But I also need to think about, do I want to put a butterfly in there? And I think I do. I also know I've got flowers on here which will add to it. So it's always important to not judge your piece until you are completely finished. Where are those gilding waxes gone? Right, um, gilding waxes, that's a silver, I don't want a silver. I think it's one of these two I really wanted. I think I'm edging towards this, what's this one called? Renaissance Gold, there you go. Now, Gilding Wax is a product which is great that you just basically dip your finger into it and then you rub it across the surface and it'll pull up all the detail. And we're going to be doing that, but I want to make sure all that's dry first. I do want to look at the butterfly thing because, as I said, I, I fancy having a butterfly in there now. Um, something that maybe pulls the colours together. A bit bigger than that one, maybe. I wonder whether that's too big. Hmm, I wonder whether I can find one. Well, it's very dramatic, isn't it? That'll get lost in the background. That was the favourite runner so far. Oh, that's way too big. Um, I am loving that colour. Or oh, actually, what about that? No, nope, that's nodded at all. Okay, I did say Halloween. That's kind of... I am leaning back towards the oranges though. I mean, if I had a big moth, I would probably consider a moth. Or, I say a big moth, a moth that would fit within that. I think it's going to be this one. I'm not sure whether I consider it too big or not, but I think, I think that's going to be okay. So I'm just going to bend those up a bit and bend these outwards, just to give myself some shape. And I think if I stick it to that bar there, how far down is that bar? That bar's quite far. I think I'm going to need to stick a piece inside there to actually stick this onto. So let's get the hot glue gun on the go again. Right. Um, these were from Tracy Fox, by the way. She's Love Junk Journals on Etsy. And they're actually a digital you print off and then you... Um, then you take it from there basically. So once you've printed it off you can actually then come in. I'm going to stick that in there I think just to give it a bit more height and then smaller. It's just finding something to lift that up a little bit. I think we're going to do that. I'll just stick stick this piece on and then the butterfly will cover it up completely. See what I mean? So right, let the hot glue gun heat up a little bit. So, um, so yes, so I, I will use a mixture of die cuts, I'll use a mixture of um, digitals, I'll use a mixture of whatever I need really. That's one thing I love about this, is you can just use whatever you want. So I'm just going to put a little bit of vintage photo around the edge of this, because this paper that I used has a white core, and therefore you can see the white line around it with a fussy cut. Not not my most favourite thing. How am I doing as far as these go? Oh, that's still quite wet, isn't it? We might have to go to hair dry, Bill. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you. Will I then hair dry this really well? And then I'll come back and then we'll pick up the process from there. Okay, so I think that's as dry as I'm potentially going to get that. So I want to stick this bit in there. Just put a bit of hot glue on it just to build it up slightly, just so I've got something to stick the butterfly to. It's not going to be seen. I'm going to let that sit there just so it gets cool, so it's it's good enough for me to press against. The next thing I'm going to use is my gilding wax. Now, gilding wax, if you're someone who's ever polished a pair of shoes, is a bit like shoe polish. Um, you put it on your finger and then you just come across the top and it will capture any surface and this was one of the reasons why I wanted to put um, stencil text on, because as you can see, it just catches all of that beautiful texture. 
I'm hoping you can see that anyway. Um, and a jar like this has, well, this jar has lasted me probably about eight years so far. <laughs> I mean, it just, I just use so little of it that it goes such a long way. I just is enough to lift the detail off this. And also I want to put it on the frame, trying to avoid dobbing on the head of the, the skull, which I just have there. But I know there's going to be roses and stuff or flowers of some sort, so that may get covered. If not, I can always go in and repaint that bit white. So a little bit there, a bit across there, because that looks really, really white to me now. Coming down here, pick up some of that lovely texture. So it just brings it to life, even if you haven't got anything textural, just putting a little bit on your finger and then rubbing it in just gives you, it's just lovely. I love this stuff. What happened to there? I think we have to take that bit off. There you go. I obviously got that bit way too wet. I think that's where everything was dripping into. That's fine, I'll do something with that wheel. Actually, where's that little bit gone? Where's that little bit that was hanging around? No, way too much. I might have to redo another bit of um, corrugated card there, or oh, actually no I won't. There you go, I've just picked it up with that. Come up here a little bit. So I absolutely love gilding wax. So just for purely this reason, it just gives you just another, another element. So as you can see, we've now got a really nice, nice bit of visual something on here, just to bring all this together. Right, put the lid on this because I can get fascinated by this stuff and then I just keep going and going and going and then before I know I've got so much on here I can't actually see it anymore. Right, let's just clean that off my fingers because now everything I touch will have that on it. There you go. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put the butterfly in there. Put a hot glue there just for that. Take away that glue string. And then place my butterfly there and hold it in position for a second or two. Get rid of that glue string before it sets on me. I just got the paintbrush just to hold that down. I don't really want to gilding wax my butterfly. Actually, do I want it on an angle? I sure quite like that on an angle. Right, that's staying on an angle. Right, just hold that down just till it all sets off. Hot glue takes literally seconds, which is probably why I like it so much. It's a very fast grab. There you go. So we've got that on there now. Quite happy about that. Right, I'm not happy about the fact that I got um, that on there. So see if I can lift that off with a little bit of clear water. Just pull it away. Not, it, not that it's a huge problem if it's there. It just annoys me. Right, so I think we've got that far. Now there's a couple of things I want to do now. Um, before I put the flowers on, I want to do a bit of splattering. I just want some, some dots on here, um, some speckles where things have been splashed, because I do like the odd splash. So again, I'm gonna have to put something over my butterfly, and I want something over the skull. And I know you're probably saying, well, why didn't you do that splatters before you did everything else? Um, I don't know. It just happens to be part of my process that um, I do the splatters towards the end. So splatters, splashes, whatever you want to call them. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of black um, acrylic paint. Just a little bit. I'm going to get quite a bit of water with it. I want it liquid, but I don't want it so liquid it turns grey when it hits the surface. I'll just do a tester over here on the book. Yeah, so I'm going to load up my brush. I'm going to knock it against my finger. And hopefully I'll get some splatters on here. I think it's something that just ties things together. 
I'm trying to get some on that corrugated guard in, card in there. There you go. And a little bit in there. Right, that's that done. And then I'm going to put that to one side. And then I'm going to take the Distress Ink. I'm going to take it out of its bottle. And I'm just going to do a few splatters with that as well. I don't know what it, I think it just because it all ties everything in. As you can see, this is something where you don't keep clean hands. So if I lift those elements off now, I've managed to keep the bits clean that I want clean and I've got everything else done. Right, I'm going to lift this up and just wipe this off because now I'm going to start sticking things on. I don't want to have the possibility of transferring any of this across. I mean, I could leave that dry or I could pull the hairdryer in, but I think you've had enough hairdryer time today. So, right, now let's have a think. What colour is are uh, the colours I want on here? Now, I do have these pink ones, which I've actually been looking at. Um, I do have some teal ones, which is teal doesn't feel right. Um, that's quite a good colour. So these are just um, inexpensive flowers I pick up when I see them on bargain. You can get them in Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Hobby Craft, any of those places. So they're just, they're just out there. So I'm just pulling a few. I think these are paper ones. Yeah, these are paper ones, actually. That might be nice. Um, I quite like those, though. So let's take, take some of these. All I'm doing is I'm just snipping the wire off the back. Put the scissors in the paint griffiths that was wise okay so now i need to just play around with okay what am i going to do how am i going to arrange them um, with these i tend to squish them back up again because i think when they're in the packaging they get really really flat so right so i'm thinking coming here somewhere so i'm just going to come in and what is this stuff on that there you go, hot glue gun again. I'm going to put hot glue on the back of this one. I think my hot glue gun's cooled down. I need to turn it back on again. So I just pop that one in there just while I turn the hot glue gun on again. So there is no right or wrong with this process, guys. This is what I'm trying to get across is it is whatever it is to you. I mean, you can do as little or as much as you wish on these things. Um, I just enjoy the process. I and mean, that's, that's part of my thing. I enjoy just the process. For me, it's more important about the journey than it actually is about where I end up. If I end up with a beautiful tag, I'm fine with that. If I don't end up with a beautiful tag, but I've had a good time and I've actually learned quite a few lessons along the way, that's also a good thing for me. Because we're constantly, constantly learning. It feels a bit day of the dead now, this, to be honest. It's just look, I've got black paint going everywhere. Excuse me, will I just move this out of my way? Because I keep putting things in it. Yeah, that would be me. So let's put another one of these up there. Glue strings everywhere. Um, let's put a white one in here. I quite like this purple one, didn't I? Just cutting these down. Now, there are dyes out there that you could actually die cut your own flowers, guys. It's if you've got a die cutting machine. Um, Look at Tim Holtz or look at Sizzix or places like that and you will find that there are some out there. I think I want that last one. I'm wondering what I want that last one to be. Um, I'm thinking the white one's too big to go in there. I just want, maybe I'll pull that off and reposition it out a bit. Right, so let's put you in there. 
let's pull the strings away and then I'm thinking I want to wipe one on the outside there you go no floristry training guys needed you just stick the suckers down and if they're in the right place the right place if they're not you just let them go so I'm quite liking that that sort of works for me I feel I need to lift it up a bit so would up, one up there be too much? I think it would actually. I think I'm just going to let that be. Let's put this to one side. Let's clear the glue gun out and turn it off. Take all the garbage out of the way. And how do I feel about this? Um, I've got to be careful because there's still um, some wet dots of paint on here. But I think what's missing is the edge. I think the edge is too white. I think I'm going to come in with a little bit of vintage photo and very, very carefully, because as I said, some of this is still wet. I'm going to go around the edges and just capture that and knock it all back a bit, just so it's not so white, white on there. Now, um, everyone's style is their own style. Some of you may hate this. Some of you may love this. It's absolutely up to you. I mean, it's the joy of doing art is no one really has the right to judge you except yourself. And to be honest with you, as an artist, we're usually hypercritical anyway. So I'm not even sure that we're qualified to judge our own art. I think we just need to remember that art is just that. It's art. It's whatever you want to make it. So let's take that out of the way there. Put that up there. Trying to think if there's anything else I want to put on there. It's funny because my gut is saying I need to put a bit of green on here, but I'm not sure whether I want to put green on here. Um, let me have a little bit of a look. Green does make it very, very Halloween-y, and I wanted it to be Halloween. Hmm... Right, let's pull in a bit of book page and I'll just put some of this on here and see where we can go. And this is the whole thing, guys. You never know whether it's right until it's right. I, I never know. I never know where, where I need to take something. So I'm just going to add some water to this because I don't, I'm not really going to be spraying this. I just want bits of this in here. So maybe if I just pull a bit of green into there. I wasn't intending on doing the um, the Halloween colours, but it just, this seems to cry out for it. So if it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. Now, I don't want to reactivate everything with water. That's my one thing I don't want to do. Because if I put water in now, all of the oxides and everything and all of the paints will just run along with all of the inks. So I'll put a little bit of green into this at the top. I'll take a little bit up to the top there. Okay, I think green is what it needed. I mean, I could keep going. I mean, that's the whole trouble is you could keep going and going and going. But I think we're going to call that quits there, guys. So have a bit of a closer look. As you can see, the black is still a little wet there. The gilding wax was what I used to pull it all together. Use some paper flowers, a butterfly from Tracy Fox. So there you go. That's that's my Halloween tab um, tag. I think I'll probably put some sort of orange um, ribbon at the top. I don't think I've got it to hand. Um, having a quick look over at the ribbon drawer. I don't... <laughs> I think that would be a little bit tacky, but there you go. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got anything that's, that's absolutely the right thing to hand. 
I mean, I could even put a bit of vintage lace or something there. So hopefully you, that was what you were asking for. You wanted to know how I create a tag, mixed media, that, that's how I do it. And everyone is different and everything is different. And, and I wholly enjoy the process. So I'm looking at this thing and I want some more white splashes on this. So just a few around here to tie it in now that I've added the green. And I don't mind the odd splash on the butterfly of white. I just didn't want black on there. Okay, so I'm going to say we're done and dusted with that, guys. Hopefully, as I said, you enjoyed that. Um, mixed media is something I will be doing a little bit more of in the future. But as you've heard me say, I'm not overly confident at it. And I'm, I know what I do is attractive to me. I just don't know whether it's attractive to everyone. So here you go. Here's my social media links as normal. Hopefully we'll see you and hopefully you'll enjoy me on this journey that I'm on. And this is me, Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, signing off. Until next time, bye guys.